Chapter 6, Lesson 1 of Geometry, continuing our work with classifying quadrilaterals. And in the first part of the uh, lesson, we talked about classifying the figure based upon two questions. The first question we ask when we look at a figure, how many sides does it have? That makes it a quadrilateral. Now, quadrilateral is more specific than just a figure, so we're getting more specific. Once we knew it was a quadrilateral, then we ask the next question. How many pairs of opposite sides are there? Uh, that are parallel. And based upon that question, we could put it into one of three categories. If none of the opposite sides were parallel, it was possibly a kite. And there were further requirements, and we'll talk about those in another video. If one pair of opposite sides were parallel, then we called it a trapezoid. And then if both sides both pairs of opposite sides were par parallel, we called it a parallelogram. And now in this video, we want to look at parallelograms where we want to go further with the parallelograms. Because now that we know that it's a parallelogram, we can get even more specific with our parallelogram classification by looking or considering the sides and then the angles. So there's questions now that you want to ask. Once you know it's a parallelogram, there's three questions that you want to ask. And you ask each one in a row, okay? And then based upon your answer, that will determine whether it is a parallelogram or something more specific. So once we know that two pairs of opposite sides are parallel, parallelogram, then we want to say or ask, well, are all the sides equal in length? If the answer to that question is yes, then we can classify it as a rhombus. So a rhombus is a parallelogram, which means it has two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel. But in addition to that, it also has all four sides that are equal. So all the sides are equal in length. Okay, So that's the more specific name for that quadrilateral. Now going back, if the answer to this question was no, then we we leave it as simply a parallelogram. All right? Then we go to the next question and we look at the angles. Are the angles right angles? Are all the right angles or are all the angles right angles? And if the answer to that question is yes, then we have a rectangle. So a rectangle is a parallelogram. It has opposite sides, two pairs that are uh, parallel. But in addition to that, all the angles are right angles. So this would be a parallelogram and also a rectangle because all of the angles in each figure is a right angle or they measure 90 degrees. Okay, so that is a more specific name for a parallelogram if it has all of the right angles congruent. If the answer to that is no, then it's a simply a parallelogram. All right? Now, if the answer to either of these is no for this one, but yes to this one, then it is a rectangle. If it's no to this one, but yes to this one, then it's a rhombus. So you can have one of these answers be yes, and then the, other, then the other one be no. But what if they're both yes? And if they're both yes, that means it's a rhombus, because the answer to that is yes, but it also means it's a rectangle. So what do we call a figure that is both a rhombus and a rectangle, meaning all the sides are equal, and all the angles are right angle. Well, that's what we call a square. So a square is a parallelogram because both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, or are parallel, excuse me. It's a rhombus because all the sides are equal, and it's also a rectangle because all of the angles are right angles. So this is the most specific type of name that we can have for a parallelogram because it uh, has all of the characteristics that we're looking for when we're trying to classify it. It has four sides, so it's a quadrilateral. Both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, so it's a parallelogram. All the sides are equal, so it's a rhombus, and all the angles are right angles, so it's a rectangle. So a square is all of those things, and all of those names apply, it would be an accurate, uh, would be an, an okay name or an accurate name for the square. The most specific name that you could get, however, would be a square. So a square has all of those characteristics of those questions that we've been asking. I've put together a flow chart that should, well, hopefully help you kind of see how you um, can flow through the questions and come to the classification 
for these quadrilaterals that we're looking at. So we begin at the top, and the first question we ask when we look at any figure is how many sides does it have? And if the answer is four, which it will be for the, uh, this chapter and lesson, then we have what we call a quadrilateral. We then ask this next question, well, how many pairs of uh, parallel sides are there? If we answer there are no parallel sides or no pairs of opposite sides that are parallel, we then ask a couple more questions to define it either as a kite or simply a quadrilateral. So if none of the pairs uh, of opposite sides are parallel, we then need to ask, well, are the adjacent sides congruent? And are the uh, non-opposite sides, or no opposite sides, excuse me, are congruent? If you answer yes to both of those, the adjacent sides are congruent, and the opposite sides are not congruent, then you classify it as a kite. If the answer to either one of these is no, then you simply have a quadrilateral. That's the most specific name that we can have for that particular four-sided figure. So that is way, the way that you work your way down the answer to this first question and classify a kite or a quadrilateral. Going back to the top then, if our answer to this question here is one, you remember, then we classify it as a trapezoid. And then to get more specific, we go to the next question and ask, are the non-parallel sides congruent? If the answer is no, then it's simply a trapezoid. If the answer is yes, then we further classify it as an isosceles trapezoid. Okay, and then we go back to the top. If the answer to this question of pairs of opposite sides that are parallel is both are, are congruent, or both are parallel, excuse me, then we have a parallelogram. And then again, we have some additional questions to ask to see if we can't classify it further. We look at the sides and we ask, are all the sides congruent? If the answer is yes, it's a rhombus. If the answer is no, then it's simply a parallelogram. Could be a right angle. Or a, 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 then we need to ask the next question. We ask, are there right angles? If there are right angles, if they're all right angles, if the answer is yes, it's a rectangle. If the answer is no, then it remains a parallelogram. So then coming down here, if we answer yes to both of these, it becomes a square. So if it has all four sides congruent and it has all four angles or right angles, it's a square. If the answer is no to either one of those, then if it has congruent sides but not right angles, it's a rhombus. If it has right angles but not congruent sides, then it is a rectangle. Okay, so that's kind of how the flow chart works. That's how you want to classify these quadrilaterals. In the next lesson, we'll talk about how we can classify these using coordinate geometry.